I like your face when you do this. <laughs> Should we swap seats? Now. Hi. Hi. Kath always looks like this when we're going to talk about finances. Mm. Let's shed some light on the subject. Today, we're going to talk to you about the cost of living on a narrowboat in winter. The cost of winter on our relationship. <laughs> <laughs> so what does winter cost? Well, <laughs> to put it into context, it's been a cold winter. Yes, and it's been our first winter. So we didn't want to, um, we wanted to wait till most of the kind of budget was in so that we knew how much it cost and what we'd spent it on and what it meant and that kind of thing. And, um, and so then we've put some, crunched some numbers and we've put them together and hopefully you're going to find this interesting. Yeah, so um, this is really just related to winter. So we're not going to talk about mooring costs. We're not going to talk about uh, insurance. insurance or blacking or any maintenance that we've had done on the boat. Um, it's just basically if you um, are going to write a budget and you're thinking how much does it cost to live on a boat, we're going to produce this little series for you called how much does it cost to live on a boat <laughs> um, and each season we're going to do a roundup and this happens to be winter's roundup because we have just survived our first winter. I've split the costs down into five different areas. Five? Five you say? Five? Why five? Well. Why five honey? Coal, which also includes kindling and so should we so we call it um do they call it a stove yeah coal coal and main 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 stove stuff so i put down that we've spent roughly 300 pounds since oct the end of october on coal okay um we buy 10 kilo bags of coal we've tried a couple of different makes we get them from the um hardware shop a bag of coal will last, what, two it, days if we're on the boat? If we're on the boat, if it's a weekend, if we haven't left the boat to go to work and we want to keep the boat a little bit warmer, we will use about a bag and a half. No, not a bag and Sorry, a half. Sorry, I meant um, half a bag a day. Two a bag. Yeah. Maybe even a bag a day, I think. Depending how warm you want it overnight, that kind of thing. So... Um, then if you are not on the boat during the day and you can afford to kind of let it just die down and then reignite it again at night, which is where the fire lighters come in, yeah, so. um, you, we can sometimes use a bag every three days yeah. when it's really cold every couple of days. Yeah, so generally a bag would last anything between one day and three days. Yeah. That's a bag of 10 kil kilos of coal or eco fuel. A lot, yeah, a lot of the other boaters will keep their fires going constantly because they're on the boat so they can just chuck a couple of blocks on every couple of hours or whatever and we'd let ours go out. During um, the day. Coal, £300. Heat logs, so I'm saying that roughly about £70 so far. For um, just the, on the winter. Heat logs. Um, and I've put £30 on for fire lighters, roughly. So altogether that's £400 on running the multi-fuel fire obviously um you can go around and you can use wood instead we don't because mm. it doesn't get as hot um and you could forage for wood definitely if, and keep your costs down that way but yeah the other item on the list is electricity so we are moored up and we plug our cable into the shoreline i've topped up three times since we moored up at the end of October um, I haven't checked the account for ages they email me when when it gets low and so we've topped up 75 pounds because they charge three pound admin fee every time so it's not really 70 pounds of electricity it's just less but still cost it so it's cost um, us about 75 pounds for the three months of winter yeah. we don't run a lot of lights in winter we've got the fairy lights we don't also have a uh, electric heater no some people do run the heater from the electricity i think that's a good idea i don't know financially if that would be better than the coal 
I'm not sure in the morning then my heat log if I should have just had an electric heater on. The next part is diesel. So we have a Makuni diesel boiler that heats the radiators and the hot water. Um, similar to an Eber spatula or a Webasto, I think they're the more common in newer boats. Um, so when we first moved on board, we would come in from work in the evening, turn the heat, the central heating on, and get up in the morning and turn the central heating on. Then in December, we went to fill up with diesel, and it was sixty quid with for hundred percent heating so you don't pay that on your heating and I then said no more diesel and you know the Makuni's fine and everything and the radiators go all the way through the boat but it's not incredibly efficient no. because maybe if you were home all the time I'm trying to get the boat from cold to not quite as cold with just the central heating no. it's not efficient so between the beginning of december and the beginning of february so that's two months right um we use 10 pounds worth of diesel the last thing that i've got on the list is gas um we've got through two gas bottles um since moving on board we've had to change it twice and a gas bottle for 13 kilos is about is it 30 35 pounds so we'll say 70 pounds worth on gas we only use the gas for cooking and we cook pretty much every day so we we used to have because we don't have a toaster so we would have use the gas to toast yeah. our bread in the morning bagels and then we moved on to porridge because it's warmer and so we cook that on the hob because we don't have a microwave um, and then we've had omelette, which obviously we cook in the frying pan. Yeah, um, so I think... Um, we don't run the kettle on the gas. No, the kettle's electric. But I think the fact that the boat's been so cold and you tend to heat things up more, we probably used a bit more gas than what we will in summer and spring, eating more yeah. salads and sandwiches, maybe. Yeah. So I think you have to factor that into winter living as well. I think um, this kind of breakdown of the costs for winter could be a lot cheaper if you um, were on a tighter budget. We made some decisions based on comfort, not finance, but there are definitely things that we would like to streamline for next year um, if we go CCing where we wouldn't really have that kind of money to spend. No, but we'd also you once the f if you can keep the boat at constant temperature so we've had so um i've also bought some insulation foam that's not included in those costs that probably was about 20 quid yeah true. um because we found that we were losing a lot of heat through the entry hatch um so i put some insulation foam up there as a temporary measure and that's kept the dinette area a lot warmer yeah, true. And um, put and Kath also put some insulation foam along one of the windows in the lounge room. Yeah, because it was blow blowing in. It's not sealed very well. So we've got some jobs to do in the summer. <laughs> but I think there were moments where if we were CCing and we weren't leaving the boat at 7 in the morning and coming back at 7 at night, yeah. then you wouldn't be so hysterical to get the boat warm straight away because mm. we come home sometimes it'd be one degree in the boat and it's just okay we have to spend money on the fire lighters the kindling and the heat log to actually survive um, oh yeah i mean whereas if you're on the boat all the time i think you could manage the cold with jumpers and blankets and a thermos for your hot water so you didn't have to keep using your gas and yeah. you know things like that you could be a lot heat. smarter and it'd be really keep... interesting to see the comparison with next year's winter mm. so all in all i'm rounding stuff up i've come up with 620 pounds just to keep the boat warm evenings and weekends so 200 pounds a month yeah so 50 pounds a week yeah so I'm expecting the um, monthly cost to go down over summer and then we'll see what it costs next winter. Yeah. If you live on a boat and you think our finances are on point, 
give us or a comment. crazily low <laughs> give us a comment below if you've got some tips things that you think that we missed out on um, we'd love to hear them um, and also if you found this video to be helpful um, with your own mover board leave us a comment we do love it when people um, tell us how they're going to make the transition onto the waters um, also give us a like because that does count to something in the YouTube universe um, check us out on patreon follow us on Twitter and um, yeah thanks for watching thank you see you soon <laughs>